Hello, world. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the Ken Simmons Show. On behalf of Area 58 Community Access Media, I'm Ken Simmons. And have I got a treat for you. I want you to get all the kids in the house, I don't care what age, from 9 to 90, from 10 to 110, because I've got a real treat for you. I've got a special, special guest. All my guests are special, but this is special, special. But before we meet him, you know, I, I want to do a monologue. I want to tell you about what's in the news. and all, But the news is so crazy. I don't know what's going on. This Moore guy. What's going on with him? Holy mackerel. I can't believe what they're accusing him of. And if he's, you know, it, it makes me feel good, however. I can act inappropriately with a woman or a girl. And nothing's going to happen for 40 years. And by that time, I'll be 130. So, you know, it's not a bad deal for me. But for you young guys, be very, very careful. Uh, a couple of weeks ago in a show that I did, there was a lady over to Shaw's, I told you this, and she came up to me and she said, uh, didn't you used to be Ken Simmons? I thought that was cute, so I told you about it. You know, this set we've got here is supposed to resemble Johnny, because Johnny Carson was a hero of mine. And every time I crack a joke that I think is funny, I don't get any studio reaction. You know why? Because there's no audience here. We've got a couple of cameramen that are sound asleep and a guy that's sweeping the floor that just as soon I go home. And so, but I'm going to tell you this one anyway. Remember, she said, you used to be Ken Simmons. Okay. I had another lady over to Shaw's only last week. And she came up to me and she says, excuse me, but can you tell me, was it you or your brother who passed away last week? I think that's kind of funny. It's kind of cute, a little old lady. Let me get a little serious now, because I, I want to cut this a little short. Bad news for me. I'm a baseball fan, have been since I was 10 years old. And I think that this is very important news to those of us who remember this team, the Boston Red Sox back in the 40s. I remember when Ted Williams came up. And on that team, there were three close buddies, Ted Williams, who's gone, Johnny Pesky, who's gone, and a guy by the name of second baseman, arguably the best second baseman that ever lived. His name was Bobby Doerr. This is November 14th. I shouldn't be telling you that. I never do that. I never use dates because this could run next year sometime. But a very great ball player and a very nice man died today. I just heard it when I was coming to the studio. Bobby Doerr, second baseman for the Boston Red Sox. He was with that organization for 27 years. He was 99 years old. Give him a thought in your prayers, as he was great. Okay, that's it. I've done my monologue. I've done my duty. I'm going to take a little walk, and I'm going to introduce you to a guest that's going to knock your socks off. Be right back. Okay, we're back again, and I'm happy to be. I'm so happy that you're out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because without you, there's no need for me. I uh, told you I had a guest that I want to introduce to you, and, you know, I don't know how to introduce this gentleman to you. Um, he needs no introduction, believe me. Um, he's a friend to all of us, and he has been a friend to all of us for a lot longer than you think. So without further ado, without a lot of yak, yak, yak from me, I'm going to introduce to you your friend and mine, Mr. Santa Claus, Santa. Oh, 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 I'm so happy to see oh, you. Oh, my God. Listen, I can't tell you how privileged I feel to have you sitting here on my show in Carver, Massachusetts, you with so the much to do. Things. You know, the, the holidays are upon us. I do know. And you are working your 
tail off. And the owls, and the owls, they're all busy. Everyone is working. I had to leave the workshop when you invited me to join you. To come down today, I thought, other than the workshop with the owls, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Oh my God, isn't that a nice thing to say? Thank so, you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Can I ask you a personal questions? Of course you can. Do I have to answer? No. Okay. No, you do not. Okay. You do not. Because I know that Santa Claus would never tell a lie. Never. Do you ever get bored with what you've got to do every year? Oh, oh, oh no, Ken. Nothing could be further from my reality. Wow. Never, ever get bored. There's so much to do. There are so many children. There are so many fun things to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, it's too no. bad that we don't realize that the other 364 days of the year. I would love that if that were true. Yeah. I was thinking the other night, wouldn't it be great, and this is kind of silly maybe, but kind of practical, wouldn't it be great if Santa Claus had silicone pants so the kids wouldn't slip on? Sil uh, Santa Sil Claus is silly speechless. Silicone pants? Silicone, no, silicone. Isn't that the way you pronounce it? I don't know. I'm not sure it's either. It's your word. You know what I like to do? <laughs> I like to leave that subject entirely. <laughs> okay. How about, uh, how about your reindeer? Are they outside? Are they parked outside? Uh, they are not. They are not? They are not. How did you get here? Uh, I have Santa magic. All right. Okay. 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 The yeah. reindeer, frankly, yeah. are back at the North Pole. You'll like this when I left them. They were playing reindeer games. Really? Uh-huh. And, and they get their exercise that way. And I also, this is a time when they have to eat a lot because you remember. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You remember that special night coming up. That's right. And That's it's right. it's going to take a lot of energy. I'm going to ask you another personal question. Okay. How old are you? Oh, you know, I think it was said I'm Older than my teeth, <laughs> and almost as old as my hair. <laughs> <laughs> are you older than me? Not many people are. Uh, I think I have you beat. <laughs> I think I have you beat, and I'll tell you why. Because I remember going to your house when you were a little boy. Oh, boy. I'm, you know, I'm so glad you said that uh -huh. because every year when I was a little boy, and by the way, every year, even now, when I'm in my 80s, I still look forward to you. And you you, know, you are my greatest gift. I look forward to going to your house and bringing you whatever little present. It's a lot easier now because you don't need very much. So now it's just fun. I look forward to going to your house and everybody's house and all of the people that have grown up welcoming me and having their children, teaching them to welcome me and to have Christmas spirit and teaching them what that's all about. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about, Cynthia. It you is. know, you represent the Christmas spirit. I do. And you I, represent I happiness. Want I want to, yes. Yeah. You that's, that's the gift I want to bring, the biggest gift. One thing bothers me. Of course. It has yes. bothered me since I was a kid. What's that? When my, my parents, who were great people, mm -hmm. my, my great parents, but they used to say, around November, around Thanksgiving time, you better behave or Santa won't come to see you. I think that's wrong because every kid should get to see Santa. Well, every kid should behave. He should try his best to I, behave. I know, I know that your parents said that, and a lot of parents say that. But Santa keeps his own list yeah. and has his own elves looking around and checks the list, and Santa's more interested 
and concerned about are you trying your very hardest? Are you doing your very best? Yeah. Are you being kind and oh, good loving for you. Good and for generous? You. Good for you. That's, that's great. That's what Santa's looking for. That's great. That's great. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what it should be. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So parents sometimes will say those things that you're mentioning to try to help you stay in line and be good, but they don't mean it. Santa's always going to come. Yeah. yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's no question about that. Yeah. If we can get serious for just a minute here, I, every year I ask for the same gift. And my gift now is uh, a little difficult. And I've spoken to you every year for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And I would love if Santa could bring world peace as a, as a gift, not only to me, but to humanity. We, I know that's a tall order. It, and you've been doing a pretty doggone well, good job. Of you know, it. you and I have talked about this before. Yes. I remember. And what I want to answer you is to say you can make that happen. Not by yourself. Santa can't make it happen by himself. But if everybody works for that goal, Great answer. Then I think we can make it happen. That, that's a great answer. So that's what I want. I want what you want. I want to give you what you want, and everybody has to want it to. Great answer. Thank uh, you. All right, I, I have one more new gift, and I've got to hurry it up because we're running out of time a little bit. Um, Is this okay? I'll, I'll yeah, I'll yeah, answer. yeah. I, I see a lot of pictures of little kids you know, starving to death. Mm -hmm. Could we do something about that as a gift to humanity? We These could. little it's, kids with their bloated bellies it's, and their it's the same. wide eyes. And, Ken, it's the yeah. same as what we have to do to have world peace, okay? Yeah. We have to, Work each together. of us, each of us be Santa in the Christmas spirit. All year long. All year long yeah. to all of the children and to everybody. And that will help to eliminate these starving children oh. and sickness. I love you for that. Everybody we, has to. God, and I love you. We've got one minute left. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to say to the people <clears throat> of Santa before we sign off? I just want to tell them how much I love coming to their houses I'm watching everybody, boys and girls. You know, just like it says, I check the list, and then I go to the elves, and I check it twice, because I want to find out who's naughty and who's nice. God love you. Thank you so much, Santa. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so um, glad to be here. Am I? extreme privilege to have you here. Thank you so much. Okay. We're going to be back. I've got another guest that you're going to enjoy. Not as much as Santa, maybe, but we'll see. So don't go away. Pour yourself your favorite beverage, slip off your shoes, and stick around for my next guest. Be right back. Thanks again, Santa. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're back. I hope you enjoyed Santa Claus. I certainly did. I hope there were some children in your house, but even if there weren't, there were plenty of adults like myself that still enjoy that old guy. He's quite a guy. All right, I've got another great guest. Uh, well, how should I say this? Now, he's, uh, he's made his living, um, but I'll let him tell you about that. Uh, he's a friend of ours. Uh, 
Yeah, he's not a friend of mine. I, he's uh, just on the show. I got to have somebody to fill in the time. Got 15 minutes, and he volunteered to fill in the 15 minutes. I don't know what he's going to talk about, but he has got a fabulous, fabulous story to tell you. I want you to meet my friend and your friend soon to be. His name is Lou McCann. Hi, Lou. Ken, great to see you again. Great to see you. Always good to see you. Tell, tell them, I haven't said anything yet. Mm -hmm. Tell them what you do. Well, I'm going to, the story as it evolves, I've done. Is it going to take long because i got to go to the bathroom? It, it is going to take long, so go ahead and excuse yourself. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I go have ahead. done Santa for 40 years. And every year... Santa? You do Santa? I do. I do. I do. Every year after Christmas time, I kind of got a little depressed because the fun was over. Yeah. And, you know, you have to kind of work through that. I found a way. I found a way that works for me to work through it. I became a Shriner clown. Clown. Yes, yeah, so I want. I did. I want to hear him tell you that, but I should have done it because I could have done it better. Go tell him. Tell him what, what. How long you've been a clown? I've only been a clown about eight years now. Eight years. Eight years. Wow. Because is there, is can I ask a rather crass question? You go. You get paid for it. You do not. You do not. Absolutely. It's a volunteer thing. Totally volunteer. Whoa. Now, when you see the Shriners in a parade. And the guys in little cars that are driving around. Yeah. Okay, everybody knows the Shriners in little yeah. cars. Okay. And the clowns and all that. We may be part of that parade organization. They may be paying the Shriners to be there. But we're okay. not being paid. Okay. That money is going to the Shriners organization. Okay. And it's now, a charitable thing. Then. It absolutely okay. not only charitable, philanthropic, Shriners in the United States own and operate 22 children's hospitals. Uh, that's something I didn't know. You've heard of the Shriners Burn Institute in Boston? I have. That's us. There's a Shriners Hospital in Springfield for, uh, used to be crippled children. I don't know how they describe it now. Um, but the point about it is we do burns, we do um, children's spinal injuries and difficulties, spina bifida, all of these things that, that were uh, very prevalent and, and are now getting the care they require. Okay, uh, let me interrupt you yeah. for a minute. Another crass question that I have to, because I want them to understand. Okay. When you say they own these hospitals yes. and operate them. Yes. Does that mean the people that come there get free treatment? They absolutely do. The uh, mantra that we use is no child is ever turned away for lack of ability to pay. And we actually have children that come from all over the world to receive care at Shriners Hospital. Is, is that anything like the Danny Thomas? Not unlike, not unlike at all. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I don't want to say we compete. We're both in the same loving game to bring health care to children in need. Boy, oh boy, how about that, ladies and gentlemen? I, you, excuse, you probably know this. I didn't know that. I've heard of the Burns Center, and I said, oh yeah, it's great, thank God for it. But I thought, you know, if you have, bring your child in and you're, you're a low-income family and you've got to scrape up the money or have the insurance or whatever, and he tells me it's free. Free. Holy mackerel. I think at one time, and don't quote me on this, I think at one time they didn't even take insurance. They kind of have come to the point of realizing, wait a minute, people are paying for this insurance to get care for their children. So they, I think at this point, will accept the insurance. But that's it. You're now, never going to get a bill. When you do clown work, should we tell them your phone number or your website or whatever? Can you, do you do that or is it, are you assigned? By the Shriners. What happens is in order to get the Shriners or the clowns, and you can get the clowns from the Shrine to do your individual events, whatever they may be. 
uh, corporate yeah. things or, or all sorts of things. But, you know, uh, but they get money for it. They get money for it. That is to say the shrine organization, the clowns yeah. that are doing it aren't receiving any money. But just let me clarify, yeah. they get money for your efforts or yes. whoever the clowns yes. happen to be, yes. and that money goes to these hospitals. Yes, it, through, through the organization, I mean, that's not enough to support the hospitals. It's very philanthropic. There are um, a lot of people that leave endowments and all sorts of ways and investments and there's, there's a, a, a structure in place to keep that um, uh, financed. It's not just off of okay. uh, you know yeah. uh, money that we get out of parades, but everything contributes. What we're really doing, or the second thing we're doing at parades, is visibility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We yeah. want we want people to understand who the Shriners are, what they're about, and consequently the reason is so that now if you know of a child or have a child in need, you know where to go. Yeah. I have a little a little rant here now that we're talking. Oh. And you mentioned the Shriners. Oh. I don't think the Shriners are doing enough PR. This is important stuff we're talking I'm, about. I'm not going to disagree with you, but... My clown name is McAdoo. 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 I don't know if you can see this. It's, it's pretty small, but I'll hold it up to the camera and hope that maybe my cameraman can wake up in time to get a picture of this. And uh, I got it, you know, like before you came on, Lou, I did a little research on clowns. Yeah, clowns uh, go way, 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 way back in history. Way back. 2,500 years ago. Well, you know, the court jester the could court have been jester, thought to be absolutely. a clown. You know, it's all of that sort of stuff. It's, it's The first clown was a dwarf. Did you know that? I'm not sure I did know that. Yeah, the first clown was a dwarf. And there was a clown at the... Uh, he was a court jester. Mm -hmm. He was the king's favorite clown. Mm -hmm. He was a little guy. And... The king looked in the mirror one day and saw that he was getting old and he started to cry. Well, the court was there, so when the king cries, the court cries. And so everybody's crying, including the clown. And the king stopped crying, so the court says, we better stop crying. The king has stopped crying. Everybody stopped crying except the clown. He's still crying. So the king went over and he said, you're still crying. Why? He said, well, you said it yourself. You look in the mirror and saw your face. I have to look at it all day. That was the first clown. That, see? Yeah. See, and that. How do you get to be a Shriner? Actually, uh, interesting progress, progression. All Shriners are Masons. I didn't know that either. Yes, you must be a Mason in order to become a Shriner. Now, the reverse is not true. All Masons are not Shriners. Right, but all but you, Shriners are Masons. All Shriners are Masons. Okay. You cannot be a Shriner without being a Mason. So you go through the steps of Masonry, become a Master Mason, and then all sorts of avenues present themselves to you, one of them being the Shriners. I'll tell you a little funny story. I know you're getting ready to say something, so I jump right in there. Go ahead. Go okay. ahead. Shriners were event, uh, uh, um, founded by a group of Masons who loved doing the work of Masonry, but found it could be a little boring. So they would meet at a pub after the meetings and have some fun, and eventually developed this organization. And the Shriners at that point were considered the bad boys of masonry. Really? <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can we know the things about the Shriners that were a little unsavory? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, you're a mason, apparently. Yes, I am. Yeah, okay. So you have to be a mason before you can become a Shriner. That is correct. All right. Um, do you enjoy being a clown? I mean, the, I knew I was introduced as a kid, I don't know how it happened, to a famous clown by the name of Emmett Kelly. Oh, yeah. And the Vinam and Bailey Circus, which he worked for at the mm -hmm. time, was in Boston. And my grandfather was in the circus. He worked in the circus. So somehow he knew this guy. Anyway, I got to meet him. I wasn't impressed with the name Emmett Kelly, but I was in awe 
of the bulbous nose yep. and the crazy hair yep. and the crazy costumes. So I said to myself at that time, as a kid, uh, 10 years old maybe, I want to be a clown. Well, guess what? I have been a clown all my life without the makeup. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> so I admire what you do. I think it's great. Uh, mm -hmm. But off camera, you had another story, too, about a train. Uh, I was busy thinking about my monologue. I didn't get, get it all. Oh, Could you? well, just um, I mentioned the Santa thing. Christmas is coming okay, up. Okay, so there's nothing to do with the Shriners. Nothing to do with the Shriners. That's, okay. that's Santa uh, is going to be on the train to Christmas Town out of Buzzards Bay this Christmas season. So starting when, Lou? I'm thinking it starts next week. Next week. Actually, you know what? They're such great people. Uh, the uh, Cape Cod Central Railway. Yep. They're going to do their first two train rides, which are more or less dress rehearsals, kind of shake down, get everybody in in place. Right. And uh, they have thrown it open, and I don't know what the limitations are, but I know. Um, that they do from that area anyway, uh, throw it open to first responders and their families. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they're, free? They're going to be free. Wow. Yeah. Where does it start? Where does it end? It starts in Buzzards Bay, yeah. at the little cute train station in Buzzards Bay. Okay, goes to the North Pole. Of course. Picks up Santa and drives or rides back to the Buzzers Bay train station with Santa on the train visiting every single child and giving them a gift. Oh, that's great. Now, is this is this a charitable thing or is it a for pay thing? It is a for pay thing. Okay. And they endeavor, I will say, that they work very hard to keep it as reasonable as possible. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there a price for adults and a price for kids? There is, and to tell you the truth. You're not sure of it. That like, um, how do I want to say this, Del? Not my business. Okay. Okay. All right. All I right. don't. I don't. I, I want to do the Is very there a best website? I can. Um, I'm saying go on the Cape Cod Central Railway site, and and you'll um, encounter it. The train to Christmas Town. Is there a phone number? No. Maybe. Okay. Get it off the okay. website. Okay. You caught me on a okay. flat-footed here. Tell them how they should get it. Are they on Facebook or Twitter or? They are on Facebook as well. And what's the name of it again? Cape Cod Central Railway. Cape Cod Central Railway. Or, and or, the train to Christmas Town. The train to Christmas Town. That's if the name. If you're interested, give that a shot. Give it a shot. Yep. Um, you, you're going to find it. And will you yeah. be there? I will be there. Okay. I will be on every train. Now, does this run every day, every weekend? It's just going to run the weekends. As it gets closer to Christmas, you might find that they extend to... Uh, Thursday, because it's going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They may go to Thursday. They may even go to Wednesday. The schedule will well, if they be get there. on the website, they'll know yep, all that. Yep, the schedule will be there. You can purchase tickets right there. Okay. Um, and Buzzards uh, Bay Train Station. Buzzards Bay Train Station. It is an incredible adventure for the whole family, but it is a memory extraordinaire for the children. And it runs at night, of course. It does, but not totally. Actually, um, on the weekends, some of the trains will be earlier. They'll, they may be like 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, okay. Yeah. But it, from my perspective, night's better because of the lights at Christmas Town at the North Pole. Are there lights there? There are. Okay. Santa's there. Okay, yeah. Santa yeah. and the elves and the reindeer. There's going to be some excitement. There's gonna, they're going to, uh, they're going to, everyone's going to see Santa and he's going to get on the train and he's going to visit every child. Question, I don't mean to throw you a curve. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Santa Claus be there? She will not because. Is Santa Claus fooling around? Who is going to keep the elves in line at the North Pole? Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I never thought of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's. You know, you don't think it's an excuse for Santa to fool around, though. Eh? Santa's no. pretty busy. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Can that that hurts that you? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Gee. What stupidity I utter. I s certainly wouldn't agree with that either. <laughs>
<laughs> That's very interesting. Though. Yeah. All right, being a clown, now, when you go on, how long does it take you to put your makeup on? Oh. That looks... Uh, I, I can do it if I'm in a hurry in an hour. <laughs> in an but, hour, yeah, wow. Yeah, in an hour. But if I, if I am taking my time and getting everything just right, it's an hour and a half. Holy mackerel. Yep. Boy, you do it yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's all part of the um, being a clown. We develop our own clown identity, our own clown names, okay. um, faces, and uh, costumes. And I'll tell you something I bet you weren't aware of. Do you know how many different types of clowns there are? I have the vaguest idea. See? McAdoo. Yes. Okay. Is called an agoust clown. A what? Agoust. Agoust. Is this a, like a, a past tense of an obscene gesture? It is not. Oh, okay. It is not. You, okay. can, you can you can look this up. An agoust clown. An agoust clown generally has um, sort of the facial expressions uh, amplified as as in the picture there. There is something that you have seen called a white face clown. Yes. Okay, they're all white. Okay, right. you know. White face clowns are the prima donnas of the clown world. Oh. Okay. A goose clowns. Uh, that bothers me that uh, it's not like July, a goose, September, or October. No, no okay. it's not. It's not. A goose clowns are the real clowns of the clown world, and they're always trying to prank the white face. Oh, okay. And, right. and because they're not very good at it, because they're clowns, <laughs> it always backfires on them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know those things when you try to throw a pie in someone's face yes. and you spin around and you get it in your own <laughs> face? That yes, would be what yes. the goose would do. <laughs> <laughs> then, then there's the one you mentioned, Emmett Kelly. He was a tramp. He was a tramp. He's sad. Different kind of clown. He tramp. wasn't a fun clown, though. It's, it's, let me, let me finish the explanation okay. and you'll see the bigger picture. He was a tramp and then there is a hobo clown. And a hobo clown will look physically very much like a tramp clown. But a hobo clown is happy. <clears throat> In the reality world, a hobo clown is living the life he wants to live. He doesn't care about anything. Or he anybody. chooses to be there. Okay. Okay. He's the kind of guy that maybe was a a, um, a wealthy man, and walked out the door one day, and instead of going right to go to work, he went left. We and, all wanted to do and, that. And exactly. You see, and this is the beauty of a hobo clown. Absolutely. Now a tramp clown, by comparison may look the same, but he's not happy. He's always got a tear here. Well, because life has dealt him a bad hand. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And he's not happy. He's kind of just, you know. As you're talking, I'm along. thinking that clowns represent all of our feelings at one time or another. Yes. We've all they, felt like going left instead of right. Oh, yeah. We've all felt like, is there a black face clown? You said white face. There is not. Is it against the law? Is it against well, the... Uh, it, it, see, again, I'm a Shriner clown, so it's against the Shriner's okay. um, code. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, I, whether it's against the law, you know... Well, as you know, Al Jolson was a blackface yes. uh, singer. And yes. They no longer allow blackface. Right. Oh. Right. So I don't know... Again, we, we just deal with the... Uh, the Shriners are very serious about clowns. Yeah. And about clowning. Yeah. And... Because the bigger picture is, it's about children. What a great way to live your life, you know, oh. the, the contributions yeah. you're making. Well, like I said, this is what I picked up when I had to put Santa away in January. What am I going to do? Now, you Bang. never did any of this for a living. I never did. What did you do for a living? If I was I a mean? salesman. Salesman. I should have guessed. I sold commercial fire alarm systems. Oh. So, I want you to get the bigger picture my life was always about doing something for other people in the sense of the gratitude I got out of the fire alarm system sales is I went to sleep at night thinking how many people I kept safe. So you didn't do it for the money? I had to eat, yeah. but it's kind of funny because my bosses always had difficulty with me because they couldn't motivate me with money. 
Really? Really. And they all got crazy like, how do you, how do you motivate a salesman if you can't do it with money? Uh, yeah, I because I was in sales myself, yeah, and money was a big motivator. Well, no, fig, you uh, know, figure it out. Um, figure me out. Okay, I, how much time we got left? <laughs> I thought so. Did we go over? <laughs> <laughs> I, we got so interested in this gentleman. Uh, I love clowns. I love comedy. I love people like this with a great personality. But we are going to have to sign off. I want you one more time, this train thing again. Say what it is, the name. It's the Train to Christmas Town. The Train to Christmas Town. It, it starts is, in Buzzards Bay. It starts in Buzzards Bay. It's railroad produced, station. It's produced by the Cape Cod Central Railway. Cape Cod Central Railway. Okay. okay. And the train departs the Buzzards Bay station and goes to the North Pole. And Santa gets on, and the train goes back to Buzzards Bay with Santa visiting all the children. It sounds like a great way to celebrate the holidays that are upcoming. I, I absolutely love it because I get to see them all. It's not like being in the mall where they all come to you and sit in your laps. They're all there. I'm going to them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We, I love it. We're going to sign off. I got to. Uh, what, we, any of you people that are interested that might not have gotten it or didn't have a pencil. If you want to call the studio, 508-866-1019, I've got a smile on my face because I thought the, uh, the cameraman's head just dropped off. It was only his headset, so thank <laughs> God. Anyway, 508-866-1019 because this man is a friend of mine. If you have any questions, I will certainly see that he gets your questions and we'll answer them for you. All right? Uh, appreciate that you're viewing. I hope you got as much out of this show as I did. I feel a little exhilarated or giddy or uh, maybe I'm just hungry. I don't know. But anyway, I thought it was great. Lou McCann, thank you uh, so much for being here. It's my pleasure. I appreciate it. Santa Claus is gone, but I want to thank him for being here. And of course, I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. Don't go away, though. I'm going to be on. I'm going to have another guest, and it's going to be another dynamic Ken Simmons show. Till then, keep a song in your heart. God bless and goodbye.